The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molsonzia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molsonzia, available on Amazon and paperback and even. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews in Eva Love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, makes great gifts for family, friends, and loved ones 24-7. And don't forget to um, check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon for great books like Missing, Once and Ringles. Also cool merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Make sure you check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM as well as PayPal and the Mike Widener Show.com and make sure you do so today. We're here with uh, three terrific gentlemen and one will be uh, joining later on as well too. And um, and of course, we'll be going with the um, the three as well too. And these guys are based out of uh, Oregon and their brothers turned bandmates. We'll talk about that. They amassed over 15 million streams on Spotify, which led them to a uh, premiere from Billboard in Once to Watch. And they were named one of uh, KCRW's um, artists to know and feature on Amazon's uh, The Next New Artist Program, and uh, the music has been featured on God Friended Me, Queen Sugar, and also Pretty Little Liars and more. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, their latest release called Anger and Grace, also off the album Love Is, and uh, also had some previous music as well, too, and uh, we'll talk about that. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from their plush studios somewhere in Portland, Oregon, we have uh, the Wurgler Brothers. We got Jordan. We got David. We got Eric. And um, I guess Scott is uh, somewhere in Jordan Road. She's going to be with us as well, too. I guess we'll call my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, the very multi-talented quartet, my brothers and I. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Good afternoon, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, thanks was- for joining us today. You can speak, Eric. It's okay. That was the best intro ever. That was great. I was just admiring everything that you like. You're juggling so many things and you're hitting all the, the points. It was great. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. We might need I, to hire you in the future for other things that we're doing. <laughs> hey, you know where to reach me, okay? I mean, this is my information right I here. I love that. If you, have, if you have to order these right here, it's got my information. You know, like you see a sleep on it. Or like say you um got some loved ones, you know, take them shopping with you and uh, just tell them about it. I mean, That's all great. kinds of great stuff. So... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's great. It's what brothers are about too. And of course, speaking of brothers, you guys are uh based off Oregon, brothers turn bandmates. And of course, you uh you got uh Eric and David, and of course, you know, Jordan, you're also an adopted brother as well, too. And like we said, Scott's gonna be uh joining us later on as well. You know, you guys also formed in a big way. You mass over 15 million streams on Spotify, and uh you also named one of uh KCRW's artists to know. You got some music featured on some uh 
movie soundtracks and more. He also got a new song, Anger and Grace, also an album release. We'll talk about those. And before getting to uh, the new song and some of your works, uh, guys, uh, tell us how you all first got started. Jordan, you take it first. Pick one. <laughs> well, or do I have to choose? Any, meeny, my mo. One of you go. <laughs> you, need, you need to say, Mike. You need to tell us how our, we started. Um, so Scott, the drummer, and I are the same age, and we picked up instruments at about the same time. Uh, I want to say maybe sixth grade. So that was a long time ago. Um, and then we started playing in bands. Um, and then as the Scott's brothers got older. And we noticed they were better musicians and singers than us. We were like, hey, you should be in the band. And uh, long story short, that's kind of how it happened. Um, yeah, David, Eric, any input? <laughs> that's pretty spot on. Yeah. I mean, we, I like for me growing up, especially, I'm, I'm the youngest. So I was, um, like Jordan said, basically, they were all in bands growing up. And I was just in high school doing choir and doing stuff like that. And, and singing and i uh just always was looking up to them going to their shows all the time their local shows uh and then eventually my i think it might have been my senior year right after my senior year in high school um scott always tells this part of the story but he we had like a jazz choir in high school and i we had a solo night at the end of every year so at my senior year solo night scott came to the show and obviously he's my brother but he hadn't really heard me sing a solo like that before and so he heard me sing that solo that solo night and then just was like, wow, we need like, this is it. Like we need to do a band with all the bros and I'd be the lead singer. So it was pretty, it was, it was fun. Huh. Interesting. And uh, Eric, go ahead and you throw your input in. Yeah. I mean, my, my reason for wanting to be in a band with them is they told me I couldn't. And that really irritates me. We um, did. <laughs> oh I'll, yeah i don't think i remember that yeah you did because well because they were going into bars and stuff and i was maybe 15 at the time when i you know was interested in being in a band with them and they're like technically you can't do that in oregon so it's not really a thing so that really got my go and i just tried to really practice and practice and get better to the point where they were like well you know let's let's ask the next concert if they'll allow you to come in and then we were allowed to get some sort of system in place where they could mark your hands and make sure that nobody serves you a drink and you have to wait outside in the car until it's time your time to play and then they bring you in two minutes before you start like all that stuff that you deal with but um that was a long time ago but ever since then we've been playing um you know that wasn't my brothers and i back then but um as soon as david got involved we we got way more into you know, songwriting as a group, collaborating as a group, um, reaching out to producers and mixing artists. Like we kind of learned the business, at least I did once we all kind of joined forces, but, um, since then it's been great. So mm -hmm. no major, no, you know, no major drama, I guess. Everybody talks about family drama. We kind of, there's obviously family drama and family, but with the band, I just don't, we just don't have that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really good, too. And of course, the early exchange, I thought your typical brothers fighting as well, too, although some of us didn't grow up as brothers, but growing up as friends, you know, having brothers as well, too. So let's talk about how you guys got started musically. So, uh, Jordan, let's go ahead and uh, talk about how you got started musically. Musically, um, I think probably from my dad used to have a guitar lying around and, um, you know, they had old records. My folks did. And so I'd pick up those records. I think I probably remember my dad playing, you know, like Led Zeppelin on the guitar. And I was like, wow, that's fun. I like mm. that. I want to do that. Um, and then also I had an older brother who was into music. And you know how at school you, you pick up from your friends and stuff. And so he was listening to music. And so the earlier music, the music that I got onto first was like grunge and like, you know, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, Soundgarden. And then um, in high school, yeah, as Eric said, or David did, we, we were in jazz choir and, and that was a big spark where wow. we just became studying jazz guitar. Um, so like jazz and grunge were kind of the two main <laughs> things, jazz grunge and the Beatles. So, yeah. Jazz but, grunge. I like that. That's really good. <laughs> and the, well, not jazz grunge, but I guess I, jazz grunge. We're I, not I, jazz I was grunge. kind of joking in a sense, so... <laughs> <laughs> But that could be a new genre, I guess. Maybe we'll start that. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. And who are some of your favorite uh, jazz artists since we uh, you were talking about that? Yeah, I love, uh, well, of course, Tis the Season, Vince Guaraldi. Um, he's amazing. Um, I like Wes Montgomery as far as guitarist or Herbie Hancock, um, um, Herb Ellis. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Uh, Freddie Green, I think is, I think is, that's his name, but he's like one of my favorites, but he's just like a chunk 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 just on you know every quarter note and just super simple stuff well not simple um but the chordings is really fun so i actually got into chords and um i think that's where i help out or i like to fit in with this band because all these guys are amazing so it's kind of fun for me to do more interesting chords um and kind of still sit back in the background but um it's kind of fun to like you know instead of just doing a regular a you know, do a different inversion or some sort of fun thing that makes hmm. it interesting. Really interesting. And who are some of our other favorite artists, singers, and songwriters and musicians growing up? Who are some of your other favorites? Is this still for me? Uh, I don't yes. know. Uh, <laughs> let's just go to grunge. I, I guess I loved, um, you know, we put on the spot, you're like, oh my gosh, who do I like? Well, I loved Chris Cornell, his voice. I mean, Chris Cornell and um, Pearl Jam, so Eddie Vedder. Um, Trying to think who else. I mean, I loved classic rock, CCR, John Fogarty, um, you know, the Beatles, like I said. I'm trying to just go through my uh, catalog. This is hard. <laughs> that, uh, that, that's okay. I'm, I'm sure we'll pop up later as well, too. Yeah. And then, Eric, um, you know, you're down here as well, too. And uh, tell us how you first got started musically. Yeah, so I went to, uh, I think it was like a Take Your Child to Work Day thing with my mom. Um, and the guy was playing violin at the elementary school that she taught at. Oh, huh. and I was really young and I was like, man, that's, I think he was doing a fiddle song. He was doing some sort of fiddle arrangement. Um, so I begged around first grade to get a violin. My parents wrote it off as he's not really interested in it. So then around second grade, after a year of begging, they're like, oh, he means it. So my, my background's a little bit more of a traditional you pick up an instrument at school, you learn how to read, mm -hmm. you play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for two years, and then you graduate, that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that got me into, especially around high school, anything that's Russian, I'm in love with from a classical perspective. Huh. Um, and then Handel, obviously, just those types of things were where my start kind of got ignited, at least from like a music theory perspective. And then, like David was saying, we would go to the 12 person, you know, 12 singers doing jazz, each having their own microphone. And then you have a combo off to the side. And Scott and Jordan were in that combo and we would go and see them growing up. And that's when I got interested in jazz. So then I got, you know, I have a weird obsession with female singers. So for me, it was Ella Fitzgerald and, um, um, oh gosh, I just had her Christmas song playing. I'm going to look it up, even though it's a little annoying. Yeah, that's okay. Anyways, um, just like really low, really low voicing women that just have a really raspy attitude and they sound like they have been through things like that was interesting to me. Hmm. Um, and if you know anything about Ella Fitzgerald's story, I think, you know, there's a few videos out now, movies out now. It's she's just a really interesting, amazing person. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is by the time David and I graduated, all of us had the same exact jazz choir teacher. Oh my gosh. She she had taught all of us just within, you know, four or five years apart from each other. So she kind of was it maybe in a sense the glue to our thinking of how music should be done or how you should eight years apart. Chords. Eight years apart. Wow. Like yeah. yeah. So David's eight years younger than Scott and Jordan. I'm four years younger than Scott and Jordan. So mm. that's really that's really interesting. And who is some of our other favorite are singers and uh songwriters musicians growing up uh i'm right now i'm obsessed with tom mish i listen to him every day he's british um really amazing guitar songwriter producer um i'm all over the board i'm really into kanye right now um i am really into i mean i listen to our music i know that sounds weird but um and it's not a plug, but there's actually songs that we've released that are especially a lot of our ballads. They're good. And I like slow songs. I like anything that sounds sad. So okay. if anybody, if anybody has a sad song suggestion from your listenership, tell them to give me a 
give me a shoot me a link. So we we certainly will do so. Although I can't think of any right now at this point. But uh, Dave, let's go to you here. So and you got your uh, special guest, which may pop in from time to time, and uh, yes. tell us how you got started musically. Uh, yeah, I had I actually grew up wanting to play the drums because I was the youngest and Scott was the oldest and he was playing drums. He's the drummer. So I just saw him and was like, I want to do that. So I started by just teaching myself to play the drums through watching Scott. Never had lessons or anything like that. Uh, and then eventually I just decided, or I think I just started singing a lot, just enjoyed singing, but I never really thought about being an actual singer, never did choir until middle school when I finally Eric had a good experience at our middle school with the choir teacher there so I was like you know what I'll give it a try and then I kind of fell in love with singing and um I guess pre-choir I was I loved uh we had the Michael Jackson uh best of DVD that was just all of his best yeah. music videos mm -hmm. and so i pretty much just listened like we had our our crappy tiny dvd player in our like the ceiling of our minivan growing up and so every car ride no matter how long or short it was i was watching the michael jackson music videos uh so then i eventually decided to to do choir and then just started going through choir went through that same jazz choir like the guys were saying um and really fell in love with jazz and found out I had a gift for uh, vocal improv, scatting, uh, mm. which is something that, especially growing up, was rare. Like not many kids were scatting, or if they did, it ended up sounding like shooby dooby dooby. Mm -hmm. And so I think I, yeah, my, my teacher kind of saw that in me and really started to encourage me to pursue scatting and, and, and learn about it. And so that was something I did a lot. I, uh, not to toot my own horn, jazz, my own jazz horn, but I got uh, a <laughs> national jazz vocalist of the year uh, or soloist, jazz soloist of the year uh, at the Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival. So that was fun. So I think I really fell in love with jazz at that point. And then that was when Scott saw me singing and then we were like, let's do a band. So that was, that's from like my, yeah, my musical singing background. And congratulations winning on your award, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I still have the plaque in my my childhood room. So, oh, that's so amazing! <laughs> you have to show it to us sometime. And uh, we're assuming our other favorite artists, singers, and songwriters, and growing up, and especially jazz. Yes, yes. Um, so Michael Jackson, like I said, uh, I remember the first one of the biggest albums that also had an impact on me was "Songs About Jane" by Maroon Five. Mm -hmm. That was one that really got me. Like that was the first album I have vivid memories like singing along to. Uh, and really starting to feel like I want to want to be a singer. So definitely Maroon 5, uh, more so early Maroon 5. I love John Mayer. Uh, I love Ed Sheeran. Um, I definitely like if you looked at my music listening right now, it is comparative to like a high school girl, probably like I, I just love Ed Sheeran, John Mayer, uh, Sean Mendez, Justin Bieber. Like I'm a sucker for just like modern day pop <laughs> but ironically because i did look up to these guys like jordan said i listened and the first album i ever got as a birthday gift was nirvana and like i just loved grunge growing up too and pearl jam and audio slave and Soundgarden and, and like all all these uh rage against the machine just like i listened to all this stuff and then now i find myself listening to like the most pop of pop music so it's kind of ironic and then jazz um I mean, I, because doing the solo stuff, we always had to like pick a jazz song to do. And I always was looking through Ray Charles stuff, anything he did. I think the mm, first one yes. I did was Georgia by Ray Charles. That was my first solo. Um, oh, man. I remember we grew up listening to grandma got us a Bobby McFerrin live DVD. Yeah. Oh, yes. I had, love I Bobby had McFerrin. never heard of him in my mm -hmm. life. And for some reason it was him live with a microphone, just like pounding his chest and singing that was to me like a door for improv from like a yeah. vocal perspective wow. so I, I remember growing up watching that just being kind of amazed yeah yeah i do love bobby mcferrin that's actually a huge inspiration because he's very just free he's weird mm -hmm. free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and i remember listening to him too before the don't worry be happy it's like you know listen to i feel good he did a great James Brown version of it. it's just like yeah. wow that was something as well too so yeah 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff. We'll talk about your uh, accolades and um, also uh, having uh, 15 million streams on Spotify and some of your um, previous music. We'll talk about that. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, International Warring Author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first skill missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve Levin endorsed by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, over 30 podcast platforms. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, Go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books and also great merchandise. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Also support us on Anchor FM as well as PayPal and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you do so today. We're here with uh, three amazing brothers, and one of them is scheduled to join us later as well, too. We have um we have Eric, we have David Wergler, and we got Jordan Roach called my brothers and I here on the Mike Widener Show. And before we talk about your latest single, uh, Anger and Grace, uh, and plus the album Love Is, you you guys were named KCRW's Artist to Know and Future on Amazon's um, The Next uh, New Artist Program and also Mass 15 Million uh, Streams. And uh, tell us about those accomplishments, especially uh, being premiered on Billboard and uh, The Ones to Watch. Um, yeah, I mean, those, those, it's, I think sometimes with that stuff, it's such a weird feeling, uh, to have, like when you're, you're grinding through music, especially the earlier stages and like, you don't, you know, you'll have these kind of dry seasons and then you'll have the seasons where things are happening. And I think it's, it's always really surreal when something like that happens. Like when you hear, oh my gosh, like billboards going to run a story on you guys, uh, and being able to like physically go to the billboard, you know, go to the internet on your phone and look it up and actually be able to scroll and see your faces on like the billboard website. It's a very weird, surreal feeling um, and exciting, obviously. Like we're just extremely grateful for that stuff. And it's, I mean, we just, yeah, we're hoping to just keep the train moving. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And Eric and Jordan, uh, your input on that? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy that you say those things out loud because I think what a lot of artists run into is we forget where we've come from and where we're at. And we always just look to improve ourselves. And I think that can get depressing at times, if I'm completely honest. And you're just like, sweet. So how do we get a million more listeners? How do we do? How do we get another award? Or how do we get on more Spotify playlists? Like, it sounds conceited to say it out loud, but that's ultimately the goal of artists is to become more popular and um, just keep growing and, and improving your fan base, but then also entertaining as many people as you can. Cause we, we believe in these songs like with all our heart. And I don't say that to be um, like overly poetic, but it's true. We put, we put a lot of time and energy and we wouldn't put these out if we didn't think they were good. So to get those accolades, thanks for listing them because I kind of forget. And I, yeah, so just thank you for saying that out loud. It's a good reminder for me, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jordan, uh, your thoughts on that? Or give us your input? I think what Eric said is good. Yeah, I think it's, you know, sometimes we get caught up just trying to do the next thing and forget that we have a lot of, you know, we've had a lot of success, even though we want more. <laughs> but... Um, it's good to, uh, remember what we've, what we've accomplished. Yeah. Sounds like a song idea. Is somebody writing this down or <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure one of you guys are writing down. Maybe Scott is writing down. I'm yeah. sure he's trying to, uh, still clock in at the same time as well, too. And, um, you also had some great music out there. You had, uh, don't dream alone, also heartbeat. And, um, also talk about your album, uh, 
Love Is. And uh, tell us all about your music and the album. Uh, yeah, with Love Is, um, we've kind of had this progression, I think, in our music from album one. We It was definitely like, you know, that's our first recording, ex- at least for me, especially. These guys had recorded some albums with previous groups. Um, but uh, first time in a studio, first time recording live vocal or, you know, studio vocals like that. And I think um, to see where we were with that first album and then try to figure out how to grow without losing who we are, because that's something that we've always taken pride in is is the organic element. Like we take pride in being able to perform live well. And so you don't want to lose that in a studio because you can, you know, it's easy to lose that. If you just go all digital route, if you get rid of all live drums, if you get rid of all live, really live takes of anything, uh, except for vocals, you can, you can lose that kind of, uh, living, breathing element in a song. And so I think with love is, uh, we, we felt like we found a good balance of like the digital electronic aspects that kind of clean the song up and make it nice and crisp, but also capturing that live performance element of it as well. Um, where we still have some live drums, we still have some really epic like live electric guitars as well as acoustic guitars so i think it that's definitely what i would say it's just a bit like a, whoa there like good. <laughs> i think he agrees with you <laughs> yeah that's he's yeah he's like yes um but yeah i think we just captured that and we feel good about it's kind of the hybridization of of those two elements into one with love is okay all right and jordan eric you can also uh chime in as well too your thoughts feel free to jump in any time guys too so Eric, you got the mic. Yeah, we're just we just like giving each other a chance to talk. It ends up with us fighting over it. Um, <laughs> fighting? What fight? You guys get along great. Come on now. <laughs> it's it's silent fighting. Um, <laughs> um, no, it's great. What David just said, I think that uh, you know this was one of the times we decided to track some of the songs with Jordan, Scott, and I all in the same room. Like obviously, the, my bass amp and Jordan's amp were in different rooms, but it was interesting to go through that process of being there in the room with Scott as he's recording his drums and we're all looking at each other um, as David's laying down a scratch track in the, in the main booth. It was, it was an interesting experience for me. It helped me get away from that. um, The bedroom producing recording aspect, which can be fun, but just sometimes really isolating. So Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that energy, like David just talked about, I think we were able to get that from, a lot of the songs were recorded and started with all of us in the room together. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, Jordan, your take on that? Oh, man, I think they both said it really well. I think this latest album, Love Is, and the single, Anger and Grace, is, uh, I mean, we love all of our songs, but I think we keep honing in on what we really sound like. Um, and so I think we're really happy with these latest releases. Yeah, okay. we're still figuring it out, which is weird, but it's, <laughs> that- it's totally true. That's what's hard with some of that stuff, too, is it's so easy. Like, we love so many different types of music that it's easy to hear the Justin Bieber song that I like so much and hear, like, when you hear a Justin Bieber song, like, you know it's a Justin Bieber song right away. Like, it is very tight, very crisp. Like, there is not a lot going on. It's very simple. There's maybe, like, five instruments throughout the whole song, and they still turn it into a hit. And I think trying to realize, like those songs resonate with us so well, but then maybe, and then being inspired by something like that, but also, like I said, not, not trying to just recreate it or copy it uh, because that's not who we are. Like we're, we're still a band. We're four live instruments. We like to play live and like finding ways to create songs that, that we are inspired by like songs like that without, um, getting rid of Jordan or getting rid of Eric or getting rid of Scott's live drum set. Like I think finding that balance is, can be really tough, but yeah, like Jordan said, I think with love is, and especially anger and grace, we we definitely are are really happy with how anger and grace turned out. Um, mm. It's an amazing message, message of a song lyrically. And then I think just all of that combined with, with the powerful choruses that are there, just, it okay. definitely feels like it hits really good. Okay, we'll talk about Anger and Grace in just a minute. And there's one thing I forgot to mention that uh, some of your songs have also landed on some top TV programs like God Friend of Me, Queen Sugar, Pretty Little Liars. And you also, um, you know, towards the likes of, um, you know, so 
with others like St. Lucia, Mr. Wives, Alan Stone, Family of the Year. And uh, tell us about those in the TV programs, uh, especially how the music got in there. Yeah, um, I did not know that side of the music industry existed when I started being like, oh, I want to be in a band. So I found out about it when because I'm an idiot. Um, once somebody offered and they're like, hey, guys, your first album was good. They want to use this one ballad in this show. We're like, cool. Can they do that? <laughs> like, that was my response. Are they <laughs> like, are they allowed to do that? I don't know. Um, they're like, yeah, you'll, you know, they'll just pay us some money and some residuals after that, blah, 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 a bunch of business stuff. But that ended up being a really good source of revenue, especially as a band starting out. That was our nice. first album. Um, that was really cool for us. And we get to share with our friends and family. Hey, we don't waste our time when we're writing music. We're getting paid to be on, you know, these TV shows. So it was kind of cool. And, um, again, it was, you know, shows I've never watched, but it was fun to watch them. And, some shows in Canada also that picked it up and wow. um, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. And then I think there's some other things I can't talk about. There's a major TV show that wants to use one of our songs in one of their upcoming seasons. That's, you know, that's still from that first album. And that's, what's so interesting about this type of business. And I don't know if any of your listeners are interested in this type of thing, but yeah, I, I, the, I think the they album are. lives, the album lives forever. Like so, mm -hmm. anybody can use songs from our first album still in a current season. And what's fun about that is there's a lot of people on this world in this world that haven't listened to our first album yet. And it's a good reminder for us to still make those songs available. So. Hmm. That's really interesting. In fact, uh, you know, a, a lot of these are on Netflix and also on uh, Hulu and all the streaming platforms. That's the beautiful thing about it. And I'm sure, you know, Dave, Jordan, you guys um, agree as well, too. And it makes you want to, like, say, follow the show more. Uh, or shows, yeah. I should say. <laughs> yeah, I can tell everyone that the when our song was on Pretty Little Liars, that was totally the first time I've ever watched Pretty Little Liars. Really? <laughs> uh, yep. Oh my gosh! And then Jordan, how about you? <laughs> it's fun to have the songs on shows. It seems, uh, yeah, it seems crazy when you know out of millions and millions of songs, and the music license person narrows it down and narrows it down, and then to write a song that connects with a show it just seems like a you know winning the lottery to really get those so all the placements have been really cool and we've seen a ton of fans from that wow um, it's fun to see fans connect to the music through a show that they love and then they find out about us through that so sync licensing is we we really liked um mm. Been a big part. <laughs> That's really yeah. interesting. And and uh, were you going to say something else, guys? Uh, just to piggyback on that, some of the coolest experiences I think we've we've seen with fan interaction uh, is when a song has been on a show. We'll have these influxes on specifically YouTube because of the commenting feature. Uh, a lot of times, people will run will run to YouTube, find the song, and then comment. God friended me, brought me here, or Pretty Little Liars brought me here. And then you see like this random influx of like a hundred comments, you know, three years after the song released. Wow. Because it finally was on a TV show. So it's fun stuff like that is is has happened and, and it's been those are yeah, those are just fun experiences to see. Mm -hmm. And it does sound like fun. We'll talk about your latest release, uh, Anger and Grace, in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcloudstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with my brothers and I with anger and grace. After this time out. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next Next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. 
it's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Me and Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the amazing quartet of My Brothers and I, featuring the Wurgler brothers, David, Eric, and uh, Scott, who's yet to join us. Also, Jordan Roach here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, let's talk about your latest song, Anger and Grace, that's out right now. And um, tell us more about the song, Anger and Grace, and what inspired you guys to uh, write it? I think first we should clarify that Scott's no longer in the band anymore after not showing up. <laughs> So oh, if anybody you, is, so you just if, fired him? We just fired him live on your show. And if anybody's a drummer, they can I'm reach sorry. out to us on social media. We've also have disowned him as a brother. There's yes. <laughs> the paperwork's going through the Oregon Department of Family, whatever it's called right now. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Yes. Uh, yeah, but anger and grace. Uh, yeah, we need some more grace right now. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, but anyways, no, yeah, anger and grace, I think. Um, well, yeah, it's in terms of this song with songwriting in general, there's kind of two ways it happens, at least for me as a writer, which all of us are writers, by the way, for anyone listening, we definitely all collaborate on everything. Uh, but for me, it's either I'll, I'll have a melody that I'm like, Ooh, this is a good melody. Or I'll have like a theme and I'm like, this lyrical theme needs something like I need to do this. So this lyrical theme definitely came first with anger and grace of just like, you know, there's everything. It, I think it resonates right now with everything going on. There's a lot of division, especially in America, uh, just so much, so much anger for a lot of different reasons and uh, whether it's political or not. And I think we, this song just feels like it speaks to a time that we're in right now. Like it's, it's easy to get angry. It's easy to think that kind of everything's just stoking fires and, and, you know, putting wedges between us all. Um, but man, how big of an impact could we have even just in our daily life? I think that's the thing too, is we look at, we have so much access to information now that I think it's kind of not a good thing at all the times, because then we see all the bad things going on in the world and then you just feel like everything's piling on top of you and you can't do anything about it. Whereas if you could just focus on like your daily interactions with the people around you, with your family and friends, with your coworkers, whoever that is, and just have grace with the people around you, like that could have such a big impact and bigger than you realize. So I think that's kind of where the song came from lyrically. It was like this, like, I want this message out there, like, yeah, we could just keep getting pissed at each other. Or what if we had grace, even just that first time? Like, what would that feel like to extend that to someone and then have them extend it back? And like, how big of an impact that could have on people's hearts? Um, and then from there, it was just about, you know, what can we write to to make this message feel like it's hitting you the right way and hitting you in a hard way? And um, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like we did it. I feel like this song just with the way the contrast between these kind of sultry acoustic guitar verses and then they're followed up by these really epic choruses that hit really hard um it definitely kind of takes you on like a roller coaster uh mm. in in a way that i think was what we were trying to achieve so that is terrific i love how you said that too about anger and grace and having all this going on all these divisions and everything and jordan and eric um feel free to chime in on the song anger and grace and your thoughts on it yeah um everything david said obviously um and that's what's cool is we we don't really like to release something if <laughs> we don't all believe it and mm -hmm. i think what david said is just spot on um, from a musical perspective, it was fun for me to be a part of recording like a one of those like epic um, alternative anthems that you would want to hear 
live. Like you almost hope you're in a stadium when you hear it. It's that like, that's how the choruses feel to me. And it was really fun to be a part of that process because that's hard to capture a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you're not in a live setting, it's really hard to capture that energy and the epicness. So it was really fun for me. um, And for all of us, I think to just witness um, elevating the music to match the message. Um, That was a lot of fun for me. So I was just happy to be a part of it. It sounds like a lot of fun for you. And uh, Jordan, your uh, thoughts on it. Go ahead and uh, chime in. Yeah, it was a fun song uh, to play and record. Um, I think I think David, um, well, from time to time, David comes out with guitar parts. And you did both of these, I think, just in GarageBand or something. And so it's fun to um, play something that he wrote, who's not primarily a guitar player. but um, And I wouldn't necessarily think as a guitar player because I've been playing for so long you're jaded and you're like oh I don't want to do that and but then um so having like a a different look on how to play a a song on guitar is fun to play um so in that aspect so so all these guitar parts for the most part it's fun to play what David envisioned um for the song to be and kind of make it come alive Um, it's definitely a fun song to play live also it's uh, a heavy hitter um yeah Okay, that sounds rather interesting. And uh, and what can we find uh, all your music at, guys? Especially uh, Anger and Grace. Yeah. Um, any any streaming service that you can conjure up in your brain, where my brothers and I, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Tidal, Deezer, like all all the ones. It's always hard to remember because I feel like there's more and more every day too. But yeah, all the streaming services you can find us there, my brothers and I. We will certainly check those out, and we're with um, the Wiggler brothers, uh, Eric and um, David, and I'm sure Scott's still trying to uh, check in here and everything. <laughs> Are you guys fighting over this? We'll have to resolve this yes. later and join on the Mike Weiner show. <laughs> guys, a very big thank you for your time. we got a few minutes, by the way, and um, what can we expect from you guys in 2022 and beyond? So, uh, Jordan, why don't you go ahead and start for once? 2022. I can't believe it's already 2022, man. Uh, you know, I Oof. think... Definitely new music. Definitely we're, uh, I don't know if we mentioned this, but we're on our own without a label uh, or manager. Um, so we're excited to be more nimble as far as uh, what we want to release, when we want to release it, who we want to work with. Um, it's great having a team. And, but also I think after the years, we've learned from our mistakes and we're excited to do things kind of more on our own. So mm-hmm. yeah, excited. Hey. That sounds great. And uh, also, who do you consider biggest influences in your career? And it's not just music, but in general. Oh, man. Eric, so, you can start this time. Oh, oh, I mean, it, it's, I'll, I'm the sappy one, so I'll say something <laughs> sappy. Is that okay? It's a middle child thing, I think. Um, so for me, it's family. Like, it's people that aren't musicians. It's my mom that played clarinet probably for two years in high school, and she still has her clarinet. Like, there's there's things like that that resonate with me just for me to, you know, take care of my instrument and realize that not a lot of people get to play music. Not a lot of people get the opportunity to go to school and learn music. So the opportunity that we have um, is inspiring to me and being around the guys is inspiring to me because not a lot of people can find three other guys in the band that they like to be with. That's not mm-hmm. an easy thing to do. So just the position I'm in, I'm blessed to be in it. And um, you know, the people that inspire me the most are my parents, my grandparents, my brothers, Jordan. Um, yeah. That's amazing. And uh also um Dave, who do you consider biggest influence in your career, and especially in general? Yeah. Um man, I would say, especially I think being it might sound like I'm piggybacking on the sappy nature of Eric's, but being the youngest, uh, because I was watching these guys for the majority of my middle school and high school life play instruments and do that stuff uh, and be in a band and perform live shows. Like one of my favorite things to do as a kid was go to their live shows uh, just at wherever they were playing. Um, And like, I like, man, I'm going to get choked up. I've never even said this before, but like genuinely, like there's, I felt great pride, like them being my older brothers, like, sorry. (laughs) Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. We're allowed to cry because Scott's not here. 
yeah. When Scott's here, he cracks the whip. No crying, David. <laughs> but that it was just like that was it had a big impact on me. Um, seeing them pursue music and uh, to then be a part of it, and now all of us per- pursue it together. It's it's really special. Wow, that is very special. You put it very well, David. And uh, Jordan, how about you? Um, who, who do you consider biggest influence in your career, especially in general? That's just in general. I, I think. Well, I was trying to, when I was when these guys had such a I, specific on family. I totally agree with that. But then I guess I'm relating also to just a musician, and so I'll relate us to like a band. And I was thinking of the Avid Brothers. I love the Avid Brothers. It's two brothers, and then. Um, you know, other members of the band, but there's actually two brothers there and they just seem to be such level headed guys where, um, where it's not all about rock and roll and money and drugs. And it's like their family comes first and, um, they're not going to sacrifice family and that for the music. It just kind of both comes, uh, at the same time. So, Mm. yeah. That's really interesting. And uh, lastly, what's the best advice you guys can give anybody at this point? Uh, YouTube has everything. <laughs> if you're looking to learn how to how do I record a guitar? How do I set the gain level on my audio interface? Like anything? You, how do I? What's the best online course if I want to learn how to use Logic? Like use YouTube. Don't don't make excuses for like I need somebody to teach me because all those people are on YouTube. There, it's not that the barrier of entry is so low. If you have an internet access or a smartphone, just go to YouTube and figure it out and have confidence in yourself. I love that. I'm about to make that my number one advice from now on. Always YouTube it. <laughs> Thank yes. you. You're my inspiration. <laughs> that easy. That easy. All right. Let's see. Jordan, David, uh, what's the best advice any of you guys can give? Um, take turns. Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I would say when Jordan was talking about the Avid Brothers, that reminded me of Alan Stone too. We got to play with Alan Stone and he had a big impact on us. And I would say it's something that I saw in him that I would then tell people is just the kindness. Like we were just some, we weren't even like the opening act. We were the opener for his opener, but we got to piggyback on a couple of shows. And he, like, he didn't need to talk to us. He didn't need to, to, you know, show us any sort of whatever. He was the big dog selling out these shows but he still gave us the time of day. Like he still talked to us before the show and took pictures with us. And, and we uh, like that had a huge impact. So I, I would say whether you're going into music or not, just having like everyone you meet, wherever you go, just be nice to people, like be kind because that has an impact. And I, like, I'll never forget those experiences with Alan Stone and for him to do that for the lowly, my brothers and I, that was opening for his opener that just was it was huge so i would say that that's a key for sure that's very key as well too i like that and uh jordan best advice you can give to anybody uh i guess specifically relating to music and relate and talking to a musician i would say uh collaborate 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 so we get to collaborate with i get to collaborate with these guys and the brothers and i would just say you know if you're a writer try not to hold your songs too closely. I mean, because they are your, your babies, but also uh, um, with collaboration, you know, the best things are done with other people. Cause you can kind of hone and figure it out together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's a very good point as well, too. You guys gave great advice as well. Once again, we're with, um, Eric and David Wurgler, along with Jordan Roach of My Brothers and I here on the Mike Widener Show. Guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Looking forward to having you on uh, sometime next year. And before we go, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase or check out your works? Yes, I would say, uh, first of all, thanks for having us, Mike. We really appreciate it. It's been It's been great. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and I would just say our, our website, my brothers and I band.com. And then that's probably like where you should go. Like that, that has the links right at the top of the page to our email. If you want to reach out, uh, we have a newsletter that you can sign up for. If you're just wanting like updates from us about anything that's going on. And then we have links to our merch shop on there, which we have some new merch right now. And I think we even have some discounted prices for the holidays. So there's some sweet merch on there. Um, 
yeah, was there is there another one? I think that was what you said, merch and store and email. Okay. I think that pretty much covers it too. We'll make sure everybody does that. Shop for our holidays. Once again, uh, guys, a very big thank you for your time. You've been totally amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Just keep us up to date, keep in touch, and we're looking forward to having you on sometime next year. You guys are totally amazing. We wish you all the best. You guys have a great future ahead of you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mike. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 